Hello, dear 7th graders, and welcome to your new English lesson. My name is Tanya Pezogotovac, and I will be your teacher today. And today we will talk about animals and their habitats. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to sort out the characteristics of certain habitats, you will understand the text about the adjustments of polar bears to their habitat and write a short text about an animal or an imaginary animal. For this lesson, you will need your notebook and your pencil, some kind of a device with internet access and a QR code reader. Please bear in mind that you can pause this video anytime you need more time to do a certain task. You can also rewind certain parts. So, if you're ready, let's start. The environment in which an animal lives is its habitat. During evolution, both plants and animals have developed a whole range of adaptations to adjust to a certain habitat. Some adjustments help animals to blend in with the environment. Some ensure that they catch their prey or find their food more easily. Yet again, there are organisms that are adapted to extreme conditions in which no other living being could survive. Today, we will talk about four different types of habitats. A rainforest, a polar region, a grassland, and a desert. Here is the list of characteristics that describe certain habitats. Please copy this chart into your notebooks and sort out the characteristics under the correct heading. You may pause the video now and do the task. Now let's check whether you did everything correctly. Rainforest is a hot tropical area near the equator, also known as the jungle. There are a lot of trees there and it rains a lot. Polar region is the coldest place on Earth. It's covered in ice and snow, and there are no trees at all. Grassland is a large, open area, also called savanna. There aren't so many trees, and it's an area of tall grass and bushes. Desert is a dry area. It's very hot during the day there and cold at night. There's a lot of sand and very little rain. And of course, there are no trees at all. Certain animals live in certain habitats. Look at these animals. I believe you've heard of all of them. So I need your help. Help me sort them out in their habitats. Pause the video and do the task. Let's check. A jaguar belongs to the rainforest. A cheetah to the grassland. A penguin to the polar region. A gorilla to the rainforest. A polar bear to the polar region. A meerkat lives in the desert, a tiger in the rainforest, a seal in the polar region, an elephant in the grassland, a camel and a lizard live in the desert, and a giraffe in the grassland. I hope you've done everything correctly. Well done! It's time that we learn vocabulary we will need during today's lesson. Here is the list of words I want you to look up in the dictionary. You can choose whether to look them up in English Croatian Dictionary or English English Dictionary. 
copy one of these two bit.ly links, bit.ly, English Croatian Dictionary or English English Dictionary into your browser, or scan the QR code, and write down the words in your notebooks. You may pause the video now and do the task. And let's check. A trait je osobina. A hump, grba. Padded, podstavljen. Nostrils, su no nozdrve. Leathery, kožast. Spiky, bodljikav. A snout, njuška. A bump, kvrga. A foot pad, jastučić na nozi. Papili su papile. Prej je pljen. Good job, everyone. Now take a good look at this picture. Which animal does not belong in this scene? Is it hard? Of course not. It's a camel. It definitely doesn't belong to the polar region. And which traits make it hard for this animal to survive here? I believe this game will help you. Please copy this link bit.ly camel adaptations into your browser or scan this QR code and label the camel's body parts. While labeling, think about how that trait helps camel to survive in the desert. Good luck everyone and enjoy the game! I believe that this is something you've come up with after you finish the game, right? And have you thought of the reasons how these things help the camels survive? You have? Great! So, how does the hair on the back help the camel survive? That's right! The hair provides shade and protects the camel from the sun. What about the hump? I bet that some of you think that it is used as a water storage. But this is actually not true. It's used to store fat, believe it or not. Long legs are there to keep the body off from the hot sand and to keep the camel cool, while the padded feet are there to stop the camel from sinking into the sand and protect the camel from the heat of the ground. And what do you think? How do stretchy nostrils, leathery mouth and long eyelashes help the camels survive? Right. Stretchy nostrils keep the sand out. Leathery mouth help the camel eat spiky plants. And you've guessed right that long eyelashes help to keep sand out of the eyes of the camel. Well done, everyone! Now we will move from the desert to the polar region. I want you to think about the adaptations of the polar bear. Here they are, and I want you to pause this video and connect the adaptations to their explanations. What's the point of each adaptation? Please pause the video and do the task. And let's check the results. Here are the adaptations and let's see what you came up with. Two layers of thick fur, of course, help to keep the bears warm. Black skin to absorb heat. Large snout or nose to smell the prey from far away. 
huge paws to distribute their weight evenly, small bumps on their foot pads, papillae, to help them grip the ice as they are walking, and sharp claws prevent them from slipping on ice and they also help them to pull out the prey from the water. I bet that you did everything correctly. Well done! You will watch a video about the polar bears now. While watching and listening, you need to put the words in order you hear them. Now you may pause the video and copy these words into your notebooks. This is the link you need to type into your browser in order to watch the video. You can also scan the QR code. You may pause the video now. I hope you liked the video. Now, let's check the answers. First thing mentioned was the bear's thick fur, then their skin, their snouts, paws, claws, and teeth. I bet you did everything correctly. Now I need you to participate in another activity. I will start the sentence and you will finish it. Bears get fat. Finish this sentence in your notebooks. This is what I came up with. Bears get fat if or when they eat a lot of food. It's your turn. Water turns into ice. Water turns into ice if or when the temperature is below zero. And the last one? Water boils. Water boils if or when you heat it up to 100 degrees Celsius. How similar or different are your sentences? Pogledajmo malo moje rečenice. Imamo plavi dio i rozi dio. Ima li nešto što primjećujete o plavom dijelu? U čemu se razlikuje od rozog? Tako je. Plavi dio može stajati sam za sebe. Mogli bismo staviti točku, pa ga nazivamo main clause, glavna rečenica. Ova if clause bi nam bila nekakva zavisna rečenica jer ovisi o glavnoj. Odlično. Ali ono što mene zanima jest koje vrijeme mi koristimo u našoj main clause. Get turns boils. Koje nam je to glagolsko vrijeme? Present simple. Odlično. Bravo. Sada pogledajmo našu if rečenicu. Eat is heat. Koje je to glagolsko vrijeme? Također present simple. Bravo. Dakle, što zaključujemo? Uh -huh. Imamo present simple u oba dijela rečenice. Tako je. When we have present simple in both parts of the sentences, that is zero conditional. Tada govorimo o nultom kondicionalu. Pogledajmo malo rečenice. Medvidi se debljaju kada jedu puno hrane. Voda se pretvara u led kada temperatura padne ispod ništice i voda ključa kada je zagrijavamo na 100 stupnjeva. 
kakve su to rečenice? Tako je, to su nam nekakvi zakoni prirode, jer svaki put kada je temperatura ispod ništice, voda će se zalediti i svaki put ako vodu zagrijavamo do 100 stupnjeva, ona će proključati. Tako mora biti. A naravno i ljudi i medvjedi će se debljati ako jedu puno hrane, takve stvari su uvijek istinite. U ovakvim slučajevima, slučajevima koristimo zero condition. Molim vas, zaustavite video i prepišite ovo u svoje bilježnice. Now let's start again. Idemo i mi ponovno. Finish the sentences. If the ice melts, here is my solution. The bears cannot hunt. Let's go again. If the bears cannot hunt, they die. If the bears hurt their snouts, they cannot smell their prey. Good. How similar or different are your sentences? Što primjećujete ovdje? Kakve su sada ovo rečenice? Jesu li ovo isto takve rečenice kao i na prethodnom slajdu? Da, samo što u ovom slučaju prvo imamo if rečenicu, pa tek onda glavnu rečenicu. I što se sada događa? Imamo zarez. Dakle, ukoliko prvo imamo if rečenicu, pa glavnu rečenicu, Uvijek moramo staviti zarez, jer je takva rečenica u inverziji. Well done. Please copy this into your notebooks. I've prepared two games for you so that you can, you can practice on zero conditional. First one is on bit.ly zero conditional 7, or if you scan this QR code, you can access it too. You need to match the two halves of the sentence. The second game is on bit.ly zero conditional quiz or if you scan this QR code and of course it's a quiz. Enjoy! Since I'm in such a good mood today, you can choose between two different homework assignments. First one is a composition on your imaginary animal. First, you should give information about the environment it lives in. What special traits does your animal have? How does your animal, animal stay warm or cool? What does it eat? What does it need to eat food safely? What special trait does your animal have to help it catch its prey? How does your animal defend itself? What body parts does your animal have? How does it move? Does your animal have any special traits to help it survive in these unusual conditions? And please, write at least three sentences using zero conditional. And the other task is that you pick one of the animals from the habitats we've learned about today, a lion, an elephant, a giraffe, or a gorilla, and write about the adaptations they have to survive. Write at least three sentences using zero conditional. Here is the link that can help you with your research. And a bit by bit, we've arrived to the very end of our lesson. It's self-assessment time. You need to color these thermometers up to the point how you feel about today's lesson. I can categorize facts about certain habitats. I can understand the text about polar bears. And I can write a composition on an imaginary animal or an ordinary animal.
And that's it for today. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye.